All right, guys, so to start this one off, I went ahead and sketched an ear shape. The point of this is mainly just to get the C shape that will go around your ear. It's good to measure your own and then transfer that onto paper since everyone's ear shape is very different as well as the length of each ear. Once you have an idea on length, I sketched out what I wanted the ear to look like on craft foam and created the template for the ears. You can see I sketched out where the webbing will eventually go, but that isn't necessary for the template. That was just to give me a better idea. And then I thickened the lines and edges where I wanted to cut out to create the actual skeleton for the shape we're going to build. When you have that cut out, you want to make some copies so that each ear will have two pieces each. That way you can sandwich them together. And then just taking a little bit of armature wire, I used this to make sure that the ears would have a little bit of bend and stability inside them once you glue them together. This will also help so that the ear has a little bit of moldability, so while it's still in its craft foam shape, you can actually put it along your own ear and bend it until it is form-fitted to your ear. You do want to just curl in those edges over top of themselves, that way if the wire was to ever move on the inside, it won't pierce through the craft foam because of the sharp ends. Then from there, it's just sandwiching the two together with some hot glue. I also add a little bit of just basic cut wire to the edges that go out, again just for a little bit of extra strength. To build up the scaling and strength of these ears, I'm going to be using Warbla, which is a thermoplastic that you can heat up to a moldable consistency and then have it reharden once it dries. If you're on a budget or don't have access to sheet thermoplastic like this, you can do every step with just more craft foam. So when I start cutting out scales in the Warbla, you would just do it with more foam instead of this. For these, you can see I heated up two sheets and then just sandwich the craft foam between. If it ever starts already cooling down on you, you can always just reheat it, but make sure you don't let the heat gun touch the foam directly or it will just melt the craft foam and you'll kind of have to start over. Before I cut it out, I did just want to press in those edges so that they were a little bit more defined. I think I was just using a cake modeling tool here, but you can use a butter knife or a spoon, whatever you have on hand. And this will just help that when you do the cutting here, you can help eliminate the chance of getting trapped air bubbles. And you can kind of overcut as evident when you start seeing the purple craft foam shine through. That is because I'm cutting too close to the craft foam, but I knew I was going to be putting the scaling over top, so I kind of just went with it. But you also want to try and avoid doing that. Good trick to also note is that Warbler is much easier to cut when it's warm. So when it started cooling down, I would keep heating it up so that I could actually get the cuts done properly. Then because this inner portion was really hard to cut properly, I got left with a lot of ragged edges. So once I let the warbler fully dry and harden again, I went ahead and used my Dremel to just sand in the inside as well as any lines that I might have left over from the sandwiching process and just smooth them out with that Dremel. Once you have repeated the process, you will have two ears to build on. But I did notice that the extensions were going in different directions, so I just reheated the outsides and better positioned them to spike out how I wanted. When I work with Warbla, I keep any scraps and extra pieces that get left behind in the building process because they are useful for things like this. You can always reheat and reshape Warbla, so it's worth hanging on to every bit of it. These pieces I was using to just heat up and create scales. Warbla that's already sandwiched together and thicker would be great for the thick scales at the base of the ears, and then the thinner pieces would be good for the extensions. I was creating kind of house shapes for the scales, just making a pointed end and then making sure there was enough extra room to wrap around the outside of the extensions. And as you can see, I made sure to heat both up. Warbler does adhere to itself, so if you were doing this with craft foam, you would just be using hot glue here, but Warbler can just stick on top of it. And then cutting it down to the size I wanted, I would just wrap it all the way around. If you can cut the pieces to reach around perfectly and match on the underside, that is fantastic and will cause you less effort in the long run but I wasn't too worried because I knew I could just sand down those edges later. So when I would make them and they didn't meet at the backside, I was okay with that. I kept layering the scaling on top of each other as I moved down towards the base of the ear around the curve. And the one nice thing before you fully stick something down was to kind of have it sit up and then I was able to cut off pieces and make sure it really form fitted. With Warbler, even the tiniest of scraps can be useful. By just heating up all those little pieces together, you, you can make it into a little bit of a moldable plastic putty. You can see I rolled a bunch into a circle and then create a little cone that would become the talon on the tips of the ears. And then using that same method, I created another little long worm that I used to wrap around the talon and kind of really secure it to the ear. For little scales on the side, I just went ahead and cut out an actual thin piece of Warbla, just heat it up and laid it down. These were ones that I didn't want to wrap around or be too thick, so I just applied those where I thought they would work. 
And then once all the scaling was down, I needed to fix all those edges where the pieces didn't meet or left big gaps against the warbla. And again, for this, I just went in with my Dremel and started fading out all of those edges. So they kind of blended off into the warbla shape. Once they are sanded and all pretty, it is time to prep them for painting. A trick I learned from Can We Cosplay was to use wood glue to do a layer over top of the warbla. This just helps kind of get rid of the texture of warbla, which is kind of a rough gritty texture, which can be very useful for certain looks, but I wanted these to be a little bit smoother. So I went ahead and did a few coats and then left them to dry by clamping them to a little case that I have. And once those were dry, I just spray painted them black, did that off screen because I want to do that in a well ventilated area. And then for painting them, you can see I actually used pigments that I used in my makeup look. And this was because I wanted the ears and horns to really match the makeup that I was going to apply. I laid down a layer of the glue and then would pat on the pigment with a paintbrush. I used the white duochrome pigment on the tips of the scales as this color goes teal when it's on top of black. And then I used the purple pigment as a transition shade and blended that downwards towards the base of the ear. Once I finished a section of applying the pigment, I would have to go back and redefine the scales because the reflect of the pigment made the overlaps less defined. So I just used some black acrylic and added that to the underside of the overlays. To seal the pigment on a little bit, I just used a little bit of crystal clear spray and went over top of it. You can actually overdo this sometimes and if you find that the pigment dulls too much for your liking, you can just go back and add a little bit more of the pigments on top and that will bring back the shine to them. For the little talon claw, I just used a little bit of a metallic acrylic paint and did about five to seven layers of this because to get it to really go over top of the black, it needed quite a few layers to be bright enough. And then moving on to the webbing. For this, I used a pair of nylon tights that I just cut up and had the pieces shaped to the edge of the ears. Then, using the extensions as my guidelines, I cut out individual sections to go between them. If you only care about how the ears look from the outside, you could just glue this all as one piece, but because I wanted the ears to look convincing from both sides, I individually hot glued the nylon pieces between the extensions. Stretching them out as I did, and then slowly working outwards, getting that first one on the inside is the easiest to do, and then again, working in like little tiny sections, you can slowly pull the nylon outwards and stretch it so that it has a really nice webbing consistency. You want to make sure this is your last step just because you don't want to get paint on it during the painting process and if the heat gun goes anywhere near the nylon it will just melt it and ruin any chance you had of getting nice webbing. And then you can see even though I cut them originally because I stretched them out you might need to do a little bit of trimming at the ends but you just want to do that for every piece and cut it to the shape that you want. And then when you're done you'll have this really nice thin membrane that you can actually see through to give that really whimsical effect. And then you absolutely could stop here and have this be your finished product. I originally thought I was done here, but then I realized that the scales still weren't as defined as I wanted, and I knew I would be highlighting the scales when I did my makeup. So I just went in with a white acrylic paint and a fine detail brush and added that to the edges of all the areas I wanted to pop out just a little bit more. As with the scaling on my shoulder piece from my dragon look, you do not have to worry about making a perfectly connected edge of white along all the edges. Some of them are more just dotting and have spaces. It's just to give that reflect and make them stand out a little bit more. And then that will be the finished dragon ears. And then to apply them, all you have to do is hook them around your ears. They actually are really secure. Here they bent my ears a little bit only because I had not taken into account the wig when I was trying them on throughout the process. So just make sure to watch for that if you plan to wear a wig when you are rocking them. But yes, that is my dragon ear tutorial for you guys. Thank you for being so patient and waiting for this one. I am working on the horns as we speak. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I of course will see you next video. Bye guys.